Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the Influential Life. I am your host, Shadena Miranda. On the Influential Life, we help women walk in their passion and purpose so that they experience a sense of self-fulfillment. So today we are talking about owning your power and your purpose. And we have an expert in the house who's going to tell us more about that, Miss Ashley Janae. How yes. are you? Yes, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. You have no idea. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. So could you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Of course. So like Shanae mentioned, my name is Ashley Janae and I'm an author and also the creator of a brand called Fab Life 31, which is simply an elite platform for the multifaceted woman. And I help women embrace their confidence from the inside out through the mind, the body and the spirit. And on this particular platform, we, we use a multitude of vehicles from femininity, sensuality, wellness, health, you name it. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Blew us away with that, huh? <laughs> so tell us, what does it mean to own your power and your purpose? Most definitely. That's one of the things that really drove me to start this particular brand. Because I feel like a lot of times we, as women especially, not dumb ourselves down, but that's the word that's coming to my mind. But we silence ourselves or dim our lights because we, we don't want to offend anyone around us or even we may be our own worst enemy at, at times, right? So I felt like I wanted to give women a safe space to say, you know what, it's okay for me to be me. It's okay for me to step in my power, step in my light, and it won't offend anybody. The only person that you're offending when you don't walk in your power is yourself because you're not meeting um, the highest level that you're capable of meeting. So mm -hmm. that's what that means. That's actually very powerful. Yeah. Like don't dim your life for someone else you know because sometimes as women we try to be humble and we shy away from different things sometimes we don't think we have the confidence to go after that position or something mm -hmm. but don't dim your light just be no. you yeah and also i think it's just a, a matter of not overthinking things mm -hmm. because i think as women we're just natural born analyzers we're right. like okay am i capable of doing this well i know i have this skill but am i good enough for it mm -hmm. you know it's little things like that that keep us stuck here and prevent us from really going to the space that we want to be in. So. I agree. Yeah. I will say for myself, one time when I really started like owning my own power was when I went natural. Oh, like it was just so freeing, you know, like the natural movement have been, had been around for a long time, but I was mm -hmm. a straight hair girl. I was like, I'm getting my perm. I'm Listen. not wearing my hair kinky like that. And then I was on Instagram and my friend showed me a girl who was natural and she had straightened her hair and it was like almost down her back. And I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. if you can go natural and straighten your hair, my hair could get that long. So I was like, I'm gonna just do the big chop. Mm -hmm. I did it and it was the most freeing thing I had ever done. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that you brought up that example because I experienced that as well. And I think we don't realize how the day to day is really teaching us. <laughs> exactly. Because I know for me, I did the same. You know, I was straight rap. Couldn't tell me nothing about that flat rap. Listen, yeah. Right. <laughs> Every two months, it was, well, I got to get this perm, okay? Yeah. But then one day I looked at myself, I'm like, why am I putting myself through, not, don't scratch your head oh, don't, mm -hmm. it's burning, or oh my gosh, if it burns too much, you're, you're leaving patches. I'm like, why am I putting myself through this uh, to, I guess, cover up who I really am, right? right? And I tell you, like, I let my hair grow out to probably about this length. Mm -hmm. And one day I was just like, I'm sick of this in-between of the texture. So one day I grabbed some scissors and I just went to snip it. And the freeing feeling like you described mm -hmm. that I felt after it was all gone, of course I was in a, a little state of shock, at first <laughs> but once I sniffed it off and I realized wow I don't have to conform anymore I can be a hundred percent me and I felt like there was a glow that came with it that mm -hmm. I really can't describe 
I agree. And for me, like once I went natural, I had no desire to straighten my hair. Mm. I would straighten my hair like once a year. And I've been natural for at least six or seven years now. But mm -hmm. no desire at all. Just to love the way I look. And even when I was searching for jobs, like I don't care if the employer like my natural hair or not. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? They have to accept me for who I am. If not, I don't want to work for an employer like that. If you can't sell 100 percent me you yes ma'am I mean? and i think that people see that when you own your confidence and your power exactly. in that way people see it because i really i remember back in the day i was going on an interview and i was nervous about it and i had braids and mm -hmm. i was looking at myself in the mirror like what am i going to do with my hair to make it look professional right mm -hmm. and then i said you know what they're going to like me or they're not. Exactly. I went in that interview and they were like, you were the best person we've talked to all day. Mm -hmm. She was like, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but it went amazing. I'm like. Owning your confidence. When you own that confidence and that power. Okay. So you help women unleash their confidence from the inside out. Yes, ma'am. How does that work? What, is, what are the steps to doing that? So I think it's just a matter of having that awareness first mm -hmm. and also shifting your perspective mm -hmm. or shifting your perspective your perception excuse me okay because a lot of times we're looking at ourselves from being our own worst critic right mm -hmm. so i think it's a matter of saying okay well what is it about yourself that you like mm -hmm. what is it about yourself that you don't like okay let's shift those perspectives and let's shift that perception so that we can say when i look in the mirror i see this mm -hmm. when i look in the mirror i feel this when i look in the mirror i am this mm -hmm. so that's the transition that you're that you're having you say okay i'm beautiful okay yeah mm -hmm. i'm beautiful okay yeah i'm beautiful yeah. like it, it's a continued shift that's happening as you allow yourself mm -hmm. to think it as you allow yourself to speak it as you allow yourself to feel it it's an inside job before it's anything because i tell a lot of people i used to i started as a freelance makeup artist mm -hmm. and i loved making women feel beautiful on the outside but then i wondered like what's happening when they go home and they take this makeup off right mm -hmm. How are they embracing their confidence? How are they embracing their flaws? And I'm like, okay, well, how can I walk them through that? Mm -hmm. Well, let's start shifting our mindset on how we look at ourselves before we put on any type of enhancements. Listen, I love me a red lip, <laughs> but when I go home, I have to take this off at some point, right? Yeah. So I need to be able to look at myself in my purest form and say, Ashley, I love you. Ashley, you're beautiful. Ashley, you're capable. Mm -hmm. And that's how I walk people through that. It's about shifting your awareness and your perception first. That is so powerful. And I'm always talking about I am statements. Yes. Because you have to speak them over your life. When I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror, I am beautiful. Mm -hmm. I am powerful. I am wealthy. I am walking into my purpose. That's one of the first things I do. You have to say it so that you can believe it before you can actually see it. You listen, know? listen. Because a lot of times, I guess the way we think in society, we think I need to have it before I can be it. Mm -hmm. But the truth is you need to be it before you can even have something. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you don't get what you want. You get what you are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I think it's hard for people to grasp like, well, how am I going to act like I have it or act like I am it if I don't have it? If I don't have it. Mm -hmm. But you have to believe You have it. to shift. You, you have to shift. shift that mind shift. And I would say for at least for the last eight months to probably over a year, like I've really been like walking in my passion, being unapologetic and walking in my purpose. And women have been seeing that and they've been gravitating towards me. So I've kind of been working as like a transformational coach, helping other that. women walk yes. in their purpose. And the first thing I tell them, what you have to do is you have to say your rituals every morning. And I'm not talking about rituals, R-I-T-U-A-L-S. R-I-C-H-U-A-L-S, mm. rituals. <laughs> you have to speak your own rituals over your life yes, every morning. And that's yes, the first thing I tell my clients. Mm -hmm. Literally, you have to tell yourself you're beautiful. You may not have money now, but you have to tell yourself, I am wealthy. Mm -hmm. I am walking in my purpose, you know? Yes, I love that. I love that. I love that. So, would a woman who exudes confidence already still need to own her power? It's only your power and, and purpose an ongoing thing. Most definitely. I believe that as women or as human beings period we're always evolving there's mm -hmm. always something that you're going to want even when you get something that you want you've been manifesting it or working on you know pursuing your purpose and you finally get it mm -hmm. 
I'll give you a good month before you want something else, right? Yeah. So that's why I say that it's a ongoing job. Yeah. Because everything that you're gonna want or gonna want to desire is gonna be at a next level. So how are you going to match each level that you want to be at, right? Exactly. So it's an ongoing job. It never ends. It's it like, never yeah, ends. I'm confident, but there are still things where I feel like I need help. I need some guidance to get to this next level. I need somebody to push me or help me thrive in a certain space. So that's why you never you never get to a space of where, oh, I made it. Because as humans, all, you're always going to want something more. We're always wanting we, to evolve. We always wanted to evolve. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, you're always going to want someone to like push you. You're always going to want to get to that next level. So would you recommend someone getting a coach or an accountability partner or like a pace partner? Is that something yes. that you would recommend? Yes, ma'am. Most, uh, well, of course not being biased because I am a coach. Yeah. <laughs> but in all honesty, just like I was saying before, you always need that extra push. You always need that extra ump, so to speak, that is gonna help you get to that next level because where you are now is not gonna help you get to where you want to be Mm -hmm. then and then the next time and then the next time you're always going to have to be mm -hmm. a different person so a lot of times it's helpful for you to consult with somebody that's been there mm -hmm. or con or to consult with somebody that can push you mm -hmm. to get there mm -hmm. so yeah coaching is a hundred percent one hundred percent recommended yeah and there's different type of coaches just to clarify like mm -hmm. you have your business coaches you have your life coaches like I've worked with a life coach like something mm -hmm. like Ashley does or what she's talking about Definitely work with a life coach. Yes. So what advice would you give someone that would like to get started on the road to self-confidence, mm -hmm. but they may not have the support that they need at the moment, including like resources or even family support? Mm -hmm. Well, I would definitely say believe in yourself first, but also use your resources. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing in this day and age of no resources. Mm -hmm. There are so many free opportunities out there for you between YouTube or even just connecting with people that are in your area. Mm -hmm. I know for me, when I first moved here, I used to use a site called meetup.com. I don't know if it's still relevant, yeah. but um, that's a great space for you to connect with people and mm -hmm. even different types of apps, Instagram, Facebook, get in Facebook groups of people who mm -hmm. are who have like minds or that are trying to do the thing you wanna do. If you wanna build confidence, I'm sure there's a Facebook group out there that says, I'm gonna help you build confidence and somebody is gonna help you get there, right? So use your resources. I agree and I like how you talked about like, uh, connecting with like-minded people because mm -hmm. that's important and sometimes we need to rid ourselves of toxic relationships because mm -hmm. we may have friends or people that we're surrounding ourselves with that's not on the same journey as us mm -hmm. and we're wondering why we're so down or depressed all the time it's probably because you talk to that negative friend mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. always bringing you down so sometimes you have to let go of those toxic relationships and surround yourself with like-minded people Right. And I like how you mentioned like connecting with Facebook groups or even meetup.com. Like mm -hmm. I was on meetup.com and uh, I was in just getting into the fashion industry and living in Houston, Texas and just was looking for a group of people that I could connect with mm -hmm. and I didn't find the group. Yeah. So I created my own group. So when you don't find that space, you create your own safe space and you invite people to come and sit with you. So building your tribe. How would you advise someone who wants to build their own community, build their own tribe? Because I was just talking about if you can't find a safe space or other like-minded people, create your own space and invite people to sit with you. But how would you invite those people to come into your community, into your space? Well, something you said earlier made me think about this particular topic, mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of the energy mm -hmm. that you exude, right? Once you get to that space of having confidence or owning your power, it's an energy that you exude, right? right? But there's also a little step that we missed prior to that I wanted to touch on. And when a person says, okay, I want to get to this next level in my life, I want to pursue my purpose, I want to walk into my power, you need to get clear on what that looks like. Because mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, excuse me, there's always some, some sort of example that already exists that's showing you what it is you desire, right? Okay, well, I want to be a person that owns this. I want to be a person that owns this. I want to be a person that has this or is this, right? Okay, what does that look for you? What type of people are you around? What does your daily schedule look like? 
who do you have to be? Who do you have to show up as on a daily basis? How do you need to dress? How do you need to keep your house? Make a list of those things so you can start showing up as that. And naturally, the people that aren't for you will naturally fall off. Okay. And the people that are for you, you will end up attracting. They'll gravitate Easy, towards you. Easy, right? Yeah, so when you're building that tribe, it's actually great for you to be a reflection of that because now people will naturally see, okay, this is a person who practices what they preach, mm -hmm. right? So I can easily join this tribe, that this tribe of women who are building their confidence, this tribe of women who are building their power, owning their power, because this person is a reflection of that. So it's a process of becoming that thing, and then you will naturally start to attract it because energy... Mm -hmm receives mm -hmm. yeah and i like one thing you mentioned this was like off camera like i talked to you about uh like some people they want to be wealthy or they want to drive like fancy cars or they want to eat at fancy restaurants but you mentioned act as if you already have that mm -hmm. so if it's a five-star restaurant that you want to go to go and treat yourself there for the month mm -hmm. or if it's a lexus or a mercedes that you see yourself in go and test drive that mm -hmm. car you mentioned something like that. Can you talk about that? Oh, yes, ma'am. I can talk about that all day. <laughs> <laughs> because it's a very true thing. Just like I was saying in the, in the prior question, uh, energy attracts what it is, right? Mm -hmm. So naturally, when you're putting, that, putting yourself in that state of having that thing, mm -hmm. it makes you learn like, oh, actually, I can have this. It is possible. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, we convince ourselves that we can't afford something or it's not for us because it's not technically in our bracket right now. Mm -hmm. But think about how you can do something, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times those five-star restaurants have happy hour. Okay. And what you can do is you okay. can go and sit at the bar during happy that? hour and now you're in that energy. Right. Yeah, you may only be spending $20, but guess what? You're in that mm -hmm. realm, right? Mm -hmm. Because one day, not only are you gonna go in there, but you're gonna, you're gonna go in there and you're gonna run up a whole check that's gonna be nothing for you, right? And you're gonna look at that bar and you're gonna say, I remember when I used to sit over there and I used to imagine myself walking through the door with the power to, you know, afford the things that I want to afford, right? When you go into that dealership and you test drive that car, now you know how it feels. So when you get in your car, guess what? You're not in your old car anymore. You're in the new one that you want to be in. I'm telling you, I did this for myself, y'all. It works. <laughs> I used to drive a little Chevy, and I know I wanted to drive a new car. So when I was in my little Chevy, I would get it detailed. Like, I know that I wanted to get my new car detailed. And when I was at the stoplight, I used to draw the little emblem. <laughs> I used to draw the little emblem on my Chevy. I used to draw the little emblem. And sure enough... I got the keys one day. So I'm, I'm here to tell you that I don't just talk about this stuff. I know how it works. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That is the true definition of owning your power and owning your purpose. Yes. This has been an amazing conversation and so powerful and a conversation that so many people just like needed to hear. So I'm a person that's about action, taking mm -hmm. action steps. So before you leave, could you give us just a few little action steps we could do just to start owning our power and our purpose? Oh, most definitely. I think it's the number one step is being honest about what you want. Mm -hmm. Owning what you want. Right. Not letting yourself talk yourself out of something good because you feel like you can't afford it or you feel like you can't do it or you don't have what it takes. Mm -hmm. No, I want this thing, so I'm going to write it down and I'm going to figure out how I can get this thing because like we were saying earlier in the conversation, there is no such thing as no resources, right? Mm -hmm. So there is a matter of figuring out how you can make it happen. Right. So the first step is saying, okay, I know what I want okay, this is what I want. Okay, now let me write out some steps on how I can get there. Even if you have to do micro steps, do that. Take a big goal and break it down. Now now, now, what's popular is you see people figuring out how to make 100K a year, right? Mm -hmm. So then they take that 100K and they break it down from a day-to-day -day basis. So in order to make 100K a year, I think it's something like 270 for a day. So when you go from seeing a big number like 100K and then you go down to seeing 274, okay, well, how many products can I sell that will get me 274? Now it's, seem, now it's seeming more feasible, right? It's easier for you to attain that thing now because you broke it down by step, by step, by step, so it's not too overwhelming. And then take it day by day. 
I like that. Make it make sense. Because everybody want to make six figures, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it seems like a, a big goal like that is not achievable. Not if you're a business owner just starting out or not if you have a salary that's under 100, 100K, but you have a side hustle. But just like breaking it down, 100K divided by 12 months. So how mm -hmm. much do you need to make a month? And then breaking that down by the day. Mm-hmm. That's, yep. that's and powerful. And breaking that down by the product. And then just literally give yourself grace and take it day by day. Is it easy? No. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that it's easy. Because like I said, even I have my days where I'm like, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. Why am I doing this? Right. <laughs> I mean, just going down the list, right? <laughs> if I could be a, a completely honest and transparent, but it's that, it's that drive and, and that desire to keep going and knowing that, no, I want this thing and I'm going to get it. So... I just want to ask something because it just came to mind before I let you go. Do you think it's harder for people just like being on social media? Because sometimes social media provides this false narrative. People posting pictures, but they really don't live their life. Are they really not doing what you think that they're doing? So do you feel like, as I do, I feel like that puts pressure on people to work harder or they give them like this imposter syndrome or something. Mm. So I guess. And how would you work around that? Yeah. So social media is one of those things where it's very, very resourceful, right? It's right. an amazing tool that can connect us with people that we wouldn't we wouldn't otherwise be able to connect to, right? But then it also provides that uh, false narrative of, you know, this glamorous lifestyle. Any I can go and take a picture in front of a private jet right now and say I'm about to board it. <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. simple. But I think it's just a matter of just being one track minded and staying in your lane as much as possible like even having um because even with social media like there are there are other features where you can mute people mm -hmm. you can unfollow them and you can really tailor your feed in a way that's going to be uh beneficial for you so you know you're not being triggered mm -hmm. or feeling like you're not doing enough or not providing enough in your business or you're not adequate enough or whatever the case may be you can set your standard on how it's going to be helpful so. yeah and thank you for saying that because it was a few people that i had to mute mm -hmm. delete <laughs> and just get rid of people that's posting too much mm -hmm. or people that may be doing the same thing i'm doing and we started off on the same journey and i see them climbing i'm like okay well what am i doing wrong why mm -hmm. haven't it clicked for me why haven't i got it but then I realized I got to stay in my own lane. Mm -hmm. I'm on my own journey. That person is different from me. And I never know what they've been through behind the scenes and how they got to where they got. So, yeah. yeah. So, thank you for joining us, Ashley. This has been a very powerful episode about owning your power and owning your confidence. And I hope you've walked away with at least one thing. I'm sure you got a tad bit of nuggets, mm -hmm. but <laughs> I hope you walked away with just one thing about how to own your power and your purpose and just be fearless in life. Be unapologetic. Be you. Be bold. They say if your dreams don't scare you, then they're not big enough. So I want to leave you with that. And this was part two of a four-part series during the month of Black History talking about her story where we're telling powerful stories about powerful Black women. And they're sharing their stories to hopefully uplift, encourage, and inspire you to do your own thing too. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Nowadays, we are busier than ever before. We are juggling family, work, a social life, and activism in our communities, all while trying to remember to practice self-love. Your style should reflect the dynamic woman that you are. Subscribe to The Influential Life for tips to making petite styles work for every component of your life, as well as weekly inspiration to help you thrive in life, not just survive opportunities or opportunities about how you can be a part of the show, please send an email to info at influentialpetite.com. That's info at influentialpetite.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.